Hi, everybody. See you again, right? I'm really happy we're all gathered here together to have our second SANE, Save the Shama Endowment, an organization that really started 30 years ago. Uh, it was a different name because I lived in Israel and it was a very Hebrew name uh, called Machane Nefesh Bria, where we gave our social services for free in Israel. And we were there for about 15 years almost. And then we moved to Israel, from Israel back to a journey of a lifetime. <laughs> And uh, we started then uh, providing the social services for uh, all worldwide. And um, so recently there was an overload of people reaching out to my organization to get support. Um, and it was just I said one sentence on a Facebook Live class and the rest is history. The next day, 70 volunteers. And I decided, even before this whole thing, I really want to start sharing what has helped me as um, like healing emotional and mental tools uh, for my practice um, to other healing practitioners. And I'm praying that of always that the words coming from my heart will enter your heart and make a difference not only in your success as being a counselor but as a mother or a spouse uh, as a teacher because we parents are teachers uh, as a therapist counselor healer doctor whatever your profession is hopefully um, this will enlighten you we had a previous class, so you can catch up at a more convenient time for you. Uh, today's class is on compassion, on cultivating empathy, and um, the power that those two ingredients have on healing. How most appropriate when we're doing the Teferis, which is empathy and compassion energy of the Jewish Sfirat HaOmer counting. And um, this also will help you with your own self and in the way by which you can free up also um, your uh, compassion and empathy on yourself. So it could really be used across the board, not just for you as a healer. Uh, I would like to say that, you know, when I studied these concepts, some of them many, many years ago, over 30, I don't know, two years ago, I think, or more, when I was in my master's degree in psychology and marriage and family counseling uh, degree, I remember Carl Rogers, who, uh, oh, sorry, Carl Young, <laughs> uh, who actually, uh, his main ingredient is he was like proclaiming the the main ingredient is empathy and compassion and really connecting to your client and and so that that was a huge huge main ingredient for success and i can attest to that um you know the torah teaching attests to that and we're going to go into the details today how why and 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 see it from not only a very humanistic perspective but from the humanistic Torah perspective and here at SANE we focus on cognitive behavioral Torah therapy we give the maximum we can um, and including the incredible super ingredients that are in our Torah that teaches us how to help another person, how to help yourself redeem the holy neshama that, um, that is really the best you that's already there, just waiting to get unleashed, waiting to have its maximum potential revealed. And so 
what I first do with every client is I really try my best to feel what they're going through. I try my best to cultivate compassion for their struggles. I try my best to feel like if it, like as if this is my own daughter or my own child that's going through this hell and, and let them hear it in my voice. Definitely, there is a place to just listen in counseling. We talked about it last session that there is something about when a person speaks about their own problem and they know that there's someone who cares, someone that has a, a hearing heart, not just hearing with the ears, but like the heart is hearing, that is therapeutic. And by them saying their problems, sometimes they figure out a lot on their own. But today we're going to focus on how we can use our soul, our brain power to unleash their soul powers, even without saying a word. And it starts with the compassion, with the empathy. So the teaching is coming from the deep uh, Kabbalistic explanation of a sentence and it's called um uh it's it's le yaakov asher pada es avraham yaakov as we were saying earlier his um his like dominant spherotic element is tiferes which is compassion and when we cultivate compassion, like the personality that Yaakov was, then we have the power to pada, to redeem the Avraham in them. The Avraham in them is this, the, the, the love of wanting to be the right, um, you know, the right type of uh, energy of, of everything about their neshama that wants to be redeemed. So they, they have the capacity to love themselves. They have the capacity to love others, but it's a bit buried, maybe because of the trauma, right? We were talking about traumas can really um, frazzle the circuits of the brain. And we could talk about, you know, habits that they have gotten the habit and they've made certain, you know, neural pathways that are so dominant that it's hard for them to break free from their patterns of behavior. It could be that they were born genetically with a certain predisposition toward, we mentioned last week, fire, air, earth, and, uh, and water so that, uh, you know, so it's like, it's kind of like in the DNA of their soul. They're more prone to certain kinds of um, tendencies. And please do listen to the previous class and even listen to my brain gym class on prayer uh, and how to use the four elements because it's really a cure. And I feel like I don't want to go too much in detail today because some of you were on that class today even though the the class is for children but it, it will help you understand how to diagnose whether your client is fire water air and earth and then how to give them the tools of channeling those elements in their prayer service to maximize the holy energy in a good way so so this compassion that we are going to cultivate in us toward them gives us the power of healing. I can't even tell you how many medical scientific research studies um, have been brought to, you know, brought to the world to see the power of one's thoughts on a physical item or I'll give you a couple. Okay. Right now, um, there was, uh, two different sets of rats. One rats were genius rats, uh, were told that they were genius rats and they told the people who were conducting the study, you train these genius rats. And then they gave another, um, group, uh, 
the same type of rats, but said these are the low IQ rats and please teach them how to do the maze. And at the end, what happened? The, the ones that were training these rats to succeed in learning this maze that they thought were genius rats became like much more successful as if they had genius brains for a rat. And the group that were told that they were lower IQ ended up not succeeding as well and did below average IQ performance on the test. There was a, another study that there was Petri dishes. And in the Petri dishes, they told the people to um, think about the cells multiplying. And these cells were like far, far away. And then they told another group to see that the cells in this Petri dish, miles away in a hospital, were, were dying out. And as the results were, according to the ones that were told how to meditate on them. Very well known right now, if you think a particle of light is a wave, then it will, the end result will be it's a wave. And if you think that light particle is a beam of a beam and not a wave, it, the test result will be according to what you think the light is. There was even another study about chickens. <laughs> and this comes from the Torah where it says that a group of people thought, you know, the chickens should not eat corn X amount of days before Pesach because it can get stuck in the throat and then like the, it'll be chametz. And one group said, no, that, that's, that, that doesn't, doesn't get stuck in the throat. Well, anyways, so they decide to see. The group that said the corn would get stuck, all the chickens had corn stuck. And the group that said, no, the corn doesn't get stuck after they checked the chickens, the corn got stuck. So how we feel about our client, how we feel about our children, our spouses, this goes across the board. That's why when I wrote this message, this could help everyone, not just healing practitioners. And that's why I'm opening it to the public. So, um, so the idea is that the more we have compassion and feel for the client and their suffering, the more we have the power to melt away the crust of their broken heart, to melt away that, that negative energy that's just like that could be drowning them. And I always say, you see a stuck puppy under the car, you're not going to sit on the car. You have compassion that this is a stuck puppy. So, and we have to understand how powerful our mindsets are when dealing with this client and how to protect ourselves at the same time from not getting sucked into this very heavy, heavy energy of their suffering, because then we, we won't be able to like really help them. So there's a fine balance of being there with them in their pain and then a fine balance of giving them that time and space to share what's on their heart and then at the same time know when to step in and give them major hope and this is another key ingredient. Oh, I'm just gonna... So I'll explain. If let's say someone tells you, you know, according to research, uh, people that have uh, O blood type uh, will just not be able to be very, I'm a blood O type, you know, they're just not gonna be able to do a certain performance. And the person believes, oh, I'm O type, so I guess I can't. So what's going on a lot in the psychology, psychiatry, social work, and you know, it's like, oh, you must have a brain chemical. Oh, you're missing this, you're missing that. It's like as if you're damaged goods. And just maybe you'll be able to a little bit help them get out of some of their heavy heartedness or some of their you know, uh, traits that they've been like for years, maybe not being able to get out of. 
But if you have a strong conviction that, that, that the brain has incredible powers to heal itself, incredible powers to um, not limit them toward the notions that are out there in the, in the, in the field, then you give them hope. Instead of them feeling like damaged goods because they've been diagnosed with bipolar or, you know, OCD or, or schizophrenia or panic attacks and, 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 and neurotics and psychotics and all these like labels and they think they're damaged goods, then you can't help them reach new heights like never before with the, maybe the some of the treatments they've been trying to get and as the research does show okay that medicine without therapy is not as effective and barely effective compared to when they have the counseling, when they have the support, when they have the direction of someone believing in them, someone saying, I believe in you, you can be like, um, once you give them all the, the tools to be the best that they can be. So when someone does come my way, and trust me, I'm not looking for more clients. I am over the top busy. Um, that's why I'm here to help you maybe, you know, uh, help me the way this organization started so that more people can get the therapy, the, the counseling and the healing that they deserve and not have to pay $100, another $100, another $100. And then thousands of years later, they're still searching, you know, uh, thousands of dollars and years later, uh, for, you know, yet that next level that they want to attain. So the hope, the, 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 like the, your strong mindset that you will be able to give them the tools that they can use to get better is everything. So you have to believe in yourself and what you're doing. And it's kind of like, you know, a sales pitch of a sort. You know, you have to believe in your product, like in such a an, um, like strong way that they're going to be so hopeful. And that's why many times I, and I don't like to do this, trust me, but I do it only because it gives people the hope. I say, look at my client testimonials. This can be you as well. And again, if you're going to practice healing, then the CBTT approach is the maximum results because it analyzes all factors, whether it's the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the trauma, brain factors, and, and more that hopefully if you look at my book, um, don't order it yet because we're just in the midst of revising it, but the health and happiness books, because we found uh, that there was some things that I had wanted added and it wasn't added. So, but I put it all there in a systemized way of seeing all the factors so that you yourself can be your own CBTT practitioner. So, So what we have to do is, the, uh, you know, believe in them, give them hope and give them the evidence uh, so that they can believe in themselves. And um, we see that, um, you know, when, when, let's say they're sh sharing something negative, you know, oh, I've tried forever. Um, I just, you can't even imagine I've done this and I've done that. Buy it, but don't buy it in a sense, you know, like hear them feel for their struggles that they've gone through, you know, and, and uh, realize that it's, it has been a struggle because what's out there sometimes they haven't gotten to. And, um, you know, and, but when you will then give them that, uh, that, uh, fortitude 
that rock of yours that no, you know, it's almost like you can guarantee them and you can almost promise them as the Hebrew terminology is yagatiu matzati tamin. God didn't like create a world that that's it, we're stuck. Oh, we had trauma. Or God didn't create a world that we can't reach new heights. He gave us all the instructions. No matter where a person is, they can attain higher and higher levels. I mean, even in Tanya, it says like, you can be born like a toenail of a soul, like as like different parts of your body is different, like, uh, like, you know, of importance. The brain is way more important than the heart. Okay, but a toenail always stays a toenail. Although these days with all the surgeries, okay, no, not a joke here. But what I'm saying is a soul that comes on such a low level soul, like they can attain the level of a heart type of soul or a brain type of soul. Meaning there's no end. There's an infinite level of our soul getting to a higher and higher place. And so... We are taught, Yagati umatsati tamin, which is, you have arrived because you put the effort. You, you took the tools of the Torah of how to redeem your soul and how to train your brain and how to like have moach sholet alalev so that your brain, will, your thoughts, you will be able to more and more control so that your healthy thoughts will create healthy emotions. And this is a key that there's just no way no matter what you've been labeled at and and the client is coming to you it shouldn't phase you because you believe in the power of the mind and even nothing to do with religion I mean, because if you do the research, and, it, it, and, and trust me, there's a woman, and I keep praising her because she's like, <laughs> like uh, tooting what I've been tooting for over 30 years. Her book called 60 Second Fix, Dr. Melrose. She says the brain has the power to fix itself. And the more you upgrade your scientific research and knowledge about brain power, even nothing to do with religion, you will have more strength to convince them. You will have more strength because you'll also have more success with your clients and then you'll have more, uh, you know, a resume of success. And yes, there's so many different modalities that are amazing out there. But this will be just something extra to add into what you're doing so that you will have maximum success. And honestly, right now, I mean... With what's going on with this pandemic and people needing to work from home, like, you know, um, this is a good field to go into. Whew. There's a lot of people out there that need help. So knowledge is power. And um, giving them the understanding that they may seem to have been diagnosed and may have been seen as a broken, you know, vessel or damaged goods. That's not the truth. The truth is that they are very high souls. And it's sometimes not easy to convince them that they're so holy and that they're so extraordinarily talented and gifted. Yes, people who have even severe psychiatric clientele diagnosis are very high souls. They have a lot of fire. And the fire causes them to have the mania. And they have a lot of earth. And the earthy element causes them to have depression. So they swing a little bit from fire and, and earth. And people who have panic attacks and anxiety attacks are the type of personalities that are very high souls. They have a lot of gavura. They have a lot of fire in the, in the, um, in the, in the state of fear and... and, and uh, and the people who have paranoia are high souls. They have a lot of faculty of imagination that is running so wild beyond themselves that they just need to learn how to contain and channel and develop these amazing godly gifts that God gave them. And that was more in our previous session. So, um, so normalizing also their problem is a key ingredient because yes maybe they are more fearful than the average person but 
you know, under the circumstance of them having an extra measure of that fear factor, like, because they're like Yitzchak Avinu and they've been gifted with a lot of gvura and a lot of fear, holy energies. And, and you say, like, it's so normal for someone of such a high caliber and such a high soul to have experienced this imbalance. Because we're not taught this in our day schools. We're not really taught this in our, you know, even our marriage classes or in our, you know, uh, seminary classes. Like, you know, this is kind of revolutionary. I wish I could take credit for it, but it's all there, in, you know, in the holy books. I mean, Rabbi Ginsburg talks about it. I should have had the book here to quote him. Psychosis is is just that. He says it's a faculty of imagination untamed. And they are gifted with extra. So the idea is if we when we normalize their challenge, because it's not that they're a broken vessel. It's normal if you have these high level souls. I remember there was a, a addiction book, uh, I forgot the name of it. What was it? Um, he did, wrote like a 12-step book on addictions and why tw there's a lot of good in 12 steps. And he was, he was saying that people that can't cope with reality, they tend to be addicts and they need to like escape. They, 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 they can't handle that. Moshiach is not here. They can't handle the, 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 the discrepancy, the traumas and the, and the heartache of the world. And they are so in tune of wanting a perfect world that it breaks them. So again, these are high souls. So it's normal if they don't know how to channel it and if nobody taught them. And once they start learning this, like in two or three days, you don't know how many times I get WhatsApp, you know, when I direct people to use learning after prayer, you know, both are two main ingredients, again, and you know, that they call me a few days later that I can't believe how much better I feel. Sometimes it takes even just a day or two. Sometimes it could take a month, you know, depending how deep the trauma of childhood or deep problems that one have come to. But I always tell them, Lech Lecha. In the Parsha it says that Avram was commanded to leave his birthplace. He was commanded to leave his Land, and he was commanded to leave his house of his father. Why focus on so much what he's leaving behind? Go forward, whoo, holy land, right? Why? Because it teaches us in order to go to our true self, because Avram's commandment is our commandment to get to the true self. So it, then you need to do these things. You need to leave the house of your father. You need, and you can. Bye-bye, the traumas of my childhood. This is the father. Like, I didn't get love from my parents. I, I had traumas from my parents. I didn't get love from them. Whatever it is, you can leave that behind. And you can teach your clients you can leave it behind. God empowered you, not some pop psychologist. And the, the house of your father and the birthplace, you were born... With a high soul. You were born with a lot of fire. You were born with a, uh, in the DNA of your soul, like anger or anxiety or depression, as chapter one of Tanya teaches us. Some people have one or more very dominant elements. And leave your land. Land comes from the word la roots, to run. And that is, they ran towards certain habits to escape. They can leave that behind. They can break their habits, as science is showing us. So imagine, okay, you're a Torah observant Jew, and you can give them proof from the Bible, from your Torah, these kinds of holy gems to help empower their belief in their soul, the b belief in the power of change. Two incidences in the Torah. Don't go after your heart's desire. What? They're about to reach uh, a level, uh, you know, like my heart's desire. Like I love that cake, or I love that, right? But the heart's desire is where the animal soul is. The heart's desire is the 
animalistic tendency of anger, sadness, anxiety, not just your desire for things. It's your heart's desire to go with animalistic base elements of anger, sadness, anxiety, and so forth. We're empowered that we can not go after our heart's desire. The other case was when the Jewish people were about to go into war. And God commands them, don't get faint-hearted. What? Not to be faint-hearted? They're about to maybe die. But God commands. And the deep teaching is that God doesn't command us the impossible. That's cruel. Cruel. We're today revolutionizing the way we are going to treat our clients. We're going to revolutionize our way of being okay and more than okay to put God into the therapy room. So, okay, they're not going to be able to, in an instant, be able to not go after the heart's desire. And the Torah teaches it. It's not going to be in an instant that they're going to be able to not be faint-hearted. But it's a goal. It's a goal. And so when we have this ability to um, feel for their journey, realize it's not going to be in a blink of an eye, but we're supplying them with answers. We're supplying them with emis, with the truth, and not, oh, I read some pop psychology book and blah, blah, whatever, and it's just Joe Schmo. I'm not putting anyone down for what they're writing, and it's, they're, they're amazing books out there. And, and I use a lot of other people's books, you know. There was a book called Attached Theory. Amazing book. So many good positive qualities about that. And I'll discuss it here. Why not? Because it's about compassion and, and empathy. And the theory goes as follows. If you were born with an attached style parenting, then you are going to have secure relationships. Oh no, poor thing. A person didn't have that growing up, then they're going to have either the avoidant type of personality in relationships or they're going to have the insecure type of personality in relationship and that's it and then there's a lot of discussion of how and who the, what type of personality should be with another so it says like well if you're in a if you're a, a, a very secure personality you're not going to be with an avoidant person and um but I'm telling you as a fact, it's not necessarily how the child was raised. There is truth to it, totally. I mean, that's, it is a fact that that can influence the way the person is going to turn out. But, but when we, the Jewish people, realize this person really had an amazing parents. I mean, like, look at Asaph, who came from amazing parents. And look at so many unbelievable tzaddikim that came from such, like Avram, who came from Terah. So there is truth to that theory, but there is a greater truth. And that is that if you were born with a fear type of personality, meaning you have a lot of anxiety because you're a high soul and you have a lot of gvura, and so you're an anxious personality, period. You could have had amazing parents that were so attached to you, but you have an anxious personality. Or, you know, you had self-actualization and you really applied the Torah teachings and you became, you know, more balanced emotionally, mentally, spiritually, you've become more secure. Even though you had a very, like, traumatizing childhood that uh, you were a latchkey kid. You can have a very secure relationship because the brain alone can get you out of a lot of problems. But the neshama and the teachings of the Torah can get you even out of a lot more challenges. So we, the Jewish people, and those of you who are not Jewish that are on here, this goes across the board. 
we have deep teachings from our Torah, which by the way, I did write a marriage book for um, everyone, like for, it's a universal edition of my Jewish marriage book. So teaching all these concepts for everyone because everyone deserves the Torah and the deep teachings to help us become more human <laughs> and uh, more, you know, uh, godly actually. So, so th the idea is that the more we normalize, um, their seemingly l like what have society has labeled them and we tell them the truth, then, you know, then they have hope. And when they have hope, with your ingredient of empathy and, and compassion for their struggles. It's a powerhouse. Um, and so that's why I'm a big believer, give solutions. You know, there's a comes a time that, yeah, you know, some people come to me and they, for years, and I kind of remind them, look, uh, they're not really my clients. There are certain people that call and need chizuk and muna support. And, 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 and I'm very kind of, you know, compassionate, empathetic toward their pain and suffering. But I say, look, you know, talking about this for years and you're not getting out of it, let me give you some things that help me. Here's some like solutions to help you get out of, uh, so that, you know, there's challenges. So you, you're not stuck here for so many years. So when we, when, we, when we start to really help them, you know, in this way, we can check. Again, this is something we've talked about more last time, but is it the mushy mind syndrome? Like, are they not using their mind? They're just robotically living their life and they might be going to the gym, you know, getting their body in shape, but they're not doing anything to keep their brain in shape. Um, it could be, you know... Uh, diet or sleep or the imagination running wild or maybe they don't have so much of a meaningful life and so the more you want definitely spend the time to uh, to to understand the full problem because as as one doctor said a half baked understanding is a half baked solution And um, because we have to be comfortable to be a spiritual chiropractor, helping them realign themselves. So imagine if somebody, you know, um, has a child that has a problem and, and, and you knew that like this is going to help them get better. Okay. So you could say, oh, I just have to be empathetic. I just have to be there for them. They have to solve it themselves. You know, it's not my place. You know, it's not my place. But if you're a real empathetic healer and you are really compassionate for their struggles, then you dare break some of the rules here and say, it's okay. I can give them tools. I can give them the godly tools as well. That's a true, empathetic, and, and a very compassionate healer. So many times, there's so many rules to being a counselor at the expense of really helping that client. Oh, you have to have borders, and you have to this. Yes, there's all that in, in due measure. But let's break through the barriers, and let's not like be so um, confined and limited you know, I know some people work for governmental agencies and I know it's not easy, you know. So this is really more for people who have their own private practice. It's definitely not easy and you have to be careful. You could lose your job. I'm not saying you should lose your job. But there is a way, you know, and now more than ever in, 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 in this generation, like it's... There's so much buzz about spirituality and healing. It's, it's amazing. And it's such an exciting time. Like Goyim, non-Jews are, are really, you know, on the front line. 
writing and 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 uh, giving their um you know there's a book called the empathic healer and she's all about god like the whole thing it's just it was, it's also a very good book but i mean i didn't go through it so i don't really usually recommend i you know many times people send me books i want you to read this and thank god i get a, a variety um that only you know, and that's been very helpful um so we're trying to be their cheerleader we're trying to be there for them we're trying to like uh give them the true empathy by being bold enough to say i may have something that will help you especially like if it helped you right so the more you practice these things on your own spiritual mental and emotional healing journeys the more you're empowered you know so you can't really practice if you don't no you can't really preach it if you're not practicing it so you do the daily meditations and this is where is another key secret ingredient to helping people heal you visualize them healing just like we said the rats the the ones that thought that they were geniuses all of a sudden they their thoughts affected their their pro, their client uh, meaning that rat has a client oh no didn't mean that but you know what i'm saying and that's another major way to help your client be successful. Yes, that's why sometimes my prayers take a bit of a while because on my list, where Rafainu, I go through every client and I think of their name and I visualize them succeeding in the area that they're having weakness. Or when I have a marriage and family counseling client, I visualize them getting along and being lovey-dovey and, and like walking along and, and being sweet to one another. Like, and it's really effective because as the teaching in the Torah says, think good and it will be good. You draw the reality of that from your mind. And this is for your own children, for your own students, for your own spouse. Use it for yourself in your own life. You'll see. It's like, I can't even tell you how powerful it is. And and uh, I know there was this famous video. I never watched it. Someone bought it for me and I couldn't. Ugh, I'm so not high tech. I tried and tried to put it in my CD disc thing and it didn't work. But it was like, I don't know, down the rabbit hole. And there was another one, Secrets. And all the goyim talking about how our thoughts have power on people. Like in, in really, Yaakov Padas Avram. Our thoughts of compassion toward that person will redeem them. We have the power to change them. There was a Japanese therapist, uh, and uh, he was sent pictures of all the worst case, like unfixable clientele. He would sit there with the picture and think of them, about them, and he would think about love they, that he loves them, and and that he would see them healing. And he was so successful; he never even met the person. Yeah, the Rafa'enu prayer is in the Amida. So that was a question down here. Luckily, I caught that. So, you know, visualize their success. Visualize them implementing what you've been trying to, you know, share with them. And... Um, of course, you have to be careful not to overload them. You know what I'm saying? That's, you know, that's not, you, you can't be like so excited like that you're throwing daggers at them. Like, oh, wait a minute, it's just too much because it could be overwhelming. So, of course, everything has to be in like stages. Everything has to be like, like a, like a, like a ballerina, just like, just soft and smooth and, but yet strong like a ballerina, what she can do, right? So, um, so in that way, it's, it's a delicate balance. So, ex and I trust me, even after 30 years, sometimes I catch myself giving too much because I'm so excited to share. And then, and sometimes I end up missing the opportunity to help them because they're just like, no, you, you're just, you're, you're too excited. So I, I, we all always have to like continuously train ourselves to like, Pull back the reins because we want to help them so much and we're so excited. 
I remember one time there was a person who said to me, you have to be like an artist and not like an archer. And like, I'm like, oh, because the archer is like shooting arrows, you know, and like it could hurt someone. It's like they, they don't want it. Like, leave me alone. And the artist is like a person who does, you know, they, they make a pretty picture and then they, they, they showcase it. And then, you know, uh, then, then maybe it's in a museum and then people who pass by, if they want to see it, they want to see it, you know? So, you know, it's like you have to delicately create a masterpiece of an artwork for them that they're going to like want what you have. Um, and these are really important. So, yeah, I'm seeing the time. Wow, it goes by so fast. So I'm just going to maybe touch upon um, one more thing. And um, next week, please God, we're going to have a class Wednesday night with Gedalia Fenster um, about like how to handle the pandemic and everything. So that will help you as a counselor. I'll keep you posted. I'll put the link in the flyer. Uh, really looking forward to that. Um, so that then the next week following Wednesday, we will do another training, but, uh, yeah, I'll give you a break. Maybe I don't want to shoot too many hours <laughs> at you. All right. So the other thing is really important is realizing, um, the, the pace, as we just said. Sometimes if I don't have a good praying session and I'm, I didn't use my air element too much in my prayer session, I'll notice that day when I'm counseling, I'm talking too fast. Like, I'm just like, bah, 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 bah. Okay, you know, like I'm an air element. Like, haven't you figured that one out yet? Right? So, and then I'll overstep the boundary and I, I'll even... I mean, I'm sorry, I'm admitting this, but and maybe you've been one of my clients and I've asked for forgiveness. I'm an air element. And I'm so excited to share the information. Not yet. We'll discuss that. I was going to leave that for the last topic. I didn't forget. But thank you for the reminder. Um, first of all, an opportunity. Renata, who jumped to the call of duty, who put that website together. I can't bless you enough forever. I'm like so thankful to you. In like one day and a half, as we were collecting the 70 volunteers, she kept putting them on a website. And it was air of Pesach, days before Pesach. So, kol kavod, may your family be blessed forever. And all the brachas, oddly die. So... So back to this air element. So like you can even end up ca catching yourself, interrupting them and not giving them space to finish their sentence because you're so excited to share. So we have to use the earth element and slow ourselves down and listen. Wait till they finish the sentence. And I have this challenge sometimes, even 30 years after when I didn't have the best prayer session that morning, I noticed. Of course, if you didn't get enough sleep, and of course, if you're sometimes over hungry, you know, there's all kinds of factors. It was a miracle. Ah, oh, I love you. Renata, thank you so much. Oh my God, I want to cry from such a blessing of meeting all of these special nishamas who, who are here that want to be better healers, better parents, better everything. So, yes, and as a counselor, there's a very important topic that needs to be discussed. When do you refer out? Okay. It's, it's like maybe you're a coach or maybe you're, you know, um, a marriage and family counselor and you're not really equipped to deal with suicide or maybe you're not equipped to, to deal with, um, you know, grief because they just lost someone. Know what you can do and know what you need to refer out. So, for instance, if someone is, um, like, it's sometimes very hard to know, like, if this is, like, so serious, you have to call 911. I remember, like, constantly calling my rabbi 
Rabbi Gazinski in Great Neck and saying, I don't know what to do. And I would call him like, cause I was in New York and this person was in Great Neck and you know, it's confidentiality, but she's saying like that she's about to, and you know, and here I am like panicking for her well being. And I remember the rabbi said, usually when they threat and they're saying that, that it's usually they're not going to be the one that's going to be doing the suicide. And we still have to be on the safe side. We still, but that has helped me over the years because if they go on and on about saying it, it's not like you don't have to take it seriously. We got to get them help. They may need to have a uh, serious intervention and, you know, and you need to be on top of it. It can't just say, oh, well, they're saying it and, and it's usually not the case because one what, what, what in a zillion might be the case. But I found over the years, for the people who had told me and said those words, none of them ever even tried to commit. So just interesting. That was just my 30 years of experience after hearing my rabbi say that. And, um, but something is different between, let's say they're saying, I feel like dying. I don't feel like living. You have to ask them, like, are you having thoughts of doing something? So there's a big difference between they feel like dying because honestly, a lot of people feel like, like it's like a lot of people don't, the ones who are suffering like this don't have a, a, a zest for life and they don't want to live. That doesn't mean that they're suicidal. Yes, you have to investigate. Yes, you have to do whatever you can to do maximum protection. But we have to differentiate between someone who's really suicidal and someone who just doesn't feel like living. It's a major difference. Um, so, yeah, and, and sometimes people need medical attention and a little medicine can go a long way. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to say, look, you know, um, get a second opinion because I really think you might need medication and because you're a danger to yourself or people who are a danger to others. We have to be more proactive to get them the right help and know when to let go. You can still be support to them. You could still be their counselor, but this is like critical. Oh, Hashem. Okay, so any further questions? I am really happy that we had the time here together. Um, let's cultivate that, that power of, of empathy, of compassion for what they're going through. But in that process of using our brain power to unleash their holy and special, amazing qualities, we should be bold enough to use our compassion in a way to like help them in the way we know best. And the way that we know, even though it might be a little preachy or a little presumptuous to give them the tools when maybe they just want to keep just talking about their problems, we can use that compassion toward them to help them be ready to accept the tools. And you can't force it, you know, the famous teaching, you can't take a, you know, you take a horse to the water, you can't like force it to drink. Um, yeah, so much to share here, but I think I've said enough. I don't want to shoot too many <laughs> arrows. Oh my gosh. All right. My beloved, uh, sane volunteers. And thank you everyone else who did, it, um, join here together. Um, I'm, I tried the whole week to get someone. Everyone was busy. I was the time I was ready to get the help and the other person wasn't ready and they were ready and I wasn't able to, I'm trying to learn how to do zoom. Um, uh, you know, uh, so that we could do Facebook and Zoom for people who are not capable of going on Facebook. Uh, okay, I'll hope by next week, I think we're going to do the Zoom and Facebook with, uh, as again, uh, Gadalia Fenster. Really looking forward to that. He's amazing. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> okay, Malco, this is for you. It's hard for me to say goodbye. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, but I think I'll let you go. 
Thank you. Ah, oh, thank you, Hannah Gidelderi, who volunteered, and Miriam Karp, who volunteered for Sain, and Malka Bracha, who volunteered, and Renata. And I didn't see all the names, but I'm so happy that you joined here uh, to be together and uh, hopefully take everyone to the next new height. Okay, bye. Blessings and keep shining by smiling.